Hey gamers, I'm Matt and I'm back ranking all of the board games in my collection, which I love so very much. So here we go, we're on number 220 now, and 220 is The Three Musketeers, The Queen's Pendant. If you've never heard about this game, you love The Three Musketeers, go ahead and buy it. Just, just hit pause, I'll be right here. In this game, players are playing one of The Three Musketeers, or D'Artagnan, and then another player is going to play The Cardinal and his men. Now, if you think playing The Cardinal and his men is boring, it's not. I play them all the time. I let everyone else be The Musketeers. Uh, what The Musketeers are trying to do is they're trying to get the Queen's Pendant, the real one. There's three fakes and one real, and they're trying to get the real one to the Queen in time. Now, the Queen is actual sculpted mini that's around tracker. If she makes it to the king and doesn't have the pendant with her, then she's screwed and the musketeers lose. This is based off the story of the Three Musketeers. Three Musketeers is by Andrew Dumas is this big, epic, I think 800 page story. Depends on what printing you have. But it's, 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 a, it's a beast to read through. And it's just a list of just adventure after adventure after adventure. One of the adventures is the Queen's Pendant. And so this is, takes place from the book. And it's so exciting because as the musketeers are fighting off Cardinal's men, Eventually, the musketeers are going to be knocked unconscious. And if you knock one unconscious, you can flip over their uh, tile and see if you found the real pendant. If the cardinal found the re real pendant, he wins. But every time musketeers land on squares together, they will be switching pendants over, even if it's a fake for a fake. Um, because you want to do a lot of misdirection so the cardinal won't know. And you don't want to make a beeline uh, to the queen because obviously that is the musketeer with the pendant. And so the cardinal can really surround that guy, knock him unconscious, and flip it over and win the game easily. I have done that several times with players who get too greedy and they see the X and they just start making a beeline. It's obvious because the cardinal's men can always, I can always put out more cardinal's men in their way and catch them and stop them. Uh, it is a really fun game. The minis in this are really nice. It's kind of a little cheap plastic, like some of my little itty bitty swords have uh, broken off, sadly. I try to take the best care I can of them, and it's too, I, I kept the little sword pieces, but it's too dinky to glue in there. I glued one, it just fell right off, just because there's nothing really there to uh, latch on to that much. But this is a really fun game, really fun game if you're into musketeers. Uh, this can be played by families and adults. I played with both. I played with my adult group. I stopped playing with my nephews because they do not, I, I keep telling them every time, stop making a dead run for it. When you make a dead run, I know you have the pendant. They go, okay, and then they make a dead run for it. I, I, I win every time. So really good balanced game. Check this game out. I think, I think you can get it pretty cheap, but fantastic game. Three Musketeers, the Queen's Pendant, my number 220. At number 219 is a game called Valdora. Valdora is a game where you are moving around town collecting gems, taking those gems and exchanging them for either a quest or for uh, extra equipment to go on those quests and succeed and do well. Uh, the the uh, When you go to one of the towns though, it's, it's really fun. The cards are double-sided and they're on these little holders that look like a book, so you're turning through the pages of a book. There's also silver, which is like cheap little chissy plastic coins, but they work. And you're paying that silver to maybe turn a few extra pages, either back or forth, if there's an item or quest you really wanted. Uh, completing those quests can give you extra victory points. Completing certain color quests can give you better points. There are tiles that are coming out that are changing the game too. If you have uh, the expansion, I think it's just called Valdor Extra, it's nice. It has this nice metal class book which shows who's, who's, who is the last player to take their last turn. It's totally pointless, overproduction there, but it's so nice. It's got some heft to it. I really like it. Um, and then I have all the other little mini promos that came out with it too. And we play with it all. We play with it all. There's so much strategy here. Now, the game is basically run of the mill. I mean, yeah, the jewels that you bring on the board will always be different each round, but the gameplay is basically the same. You're trying to complete certain quests, uh, trying to get the right equipment, collecting gems throughout town, and, you know, getting the most points by the end. But it is a nice little quaint little game. Uh, this is another game that I can see uh, everyone getting for super cheap. And I would say this is more of a family game. It's really weird. When I bring this out to my adult gaming group, which I don't think I'm ever going to do again, the adult gaming group sat there and they had announced paralysis. Like they could not figure out what the best move was for them. I said, the game's not that hard. Just 
go here, do this. Uh, my nephews, they, they don't have an AP when they play it. They have a blast, you know. There's different strategies, and we're just moving through the board. But for some reason, it's too heavy for my game group, which I don't understand why. I, I will probably bring it out to them again later on, but this is a game I prefer playing with my nephews. And if you have kids, I think this is a fun game, too. It looks wonderful. If you look at if you look on BGG and you look at some of the pictures, it is a beautiful-looking game. And for me, it's a lot of fun, which is why it's number 219 on this list. At number 218 is a very uniquely themed game. Of course, I like unique themes in board games, which is why I got a lot, a lot of games in my collection like that. This one's called Cover Me. Cover Me, you are uh, trying to select models for a, your cover of your magazine, and you're deciding on what color hair, uh, what length of that hair, or what dress they're wearing, or I can't remember what, what else it could be, but there's certain things that are in right now. And there are these three trackers that are saying, hey, here's what's hot. If you have all three, you've got a winner, you scored the most victory points, and that's big. There is something you can do where if you have three that are dead last, like out of all the three attributes, none of them uh, share that, and you just, what I kind of like to say, shot the moon, you went for broke, and you're going to score even bigger points. Now that is borderline impossible to do. I'm, I'm sure someone will eventually do it in one of our games, but no one, I've attempted several times, but it doesn't work. But I love how they do that, because playing a zero card, having three zero cards is really hard, because other players could be doing that too. You can change what is in fashion by the cards you play. Suddenly, long hair, which was leading, is not in fashion anymore, because all of a sudden, people have been playing mid-length hair, and mid-length hair has now surpassed long hair. So now your cards are going, oh no, where's the mid-length girl? My, my collection. Um, or, or certain colors are moving at the board, certain uh, color hairstyles. It's really cool. It is really cool. You have these little runway models, a uh, runway that you're moving these pieces, either it's the design on the dress or the color of the dress itself. Uh, the game has a lot of rinse and repeat, which is probably why it, it falls a little bit low on my list. But it, it, other than that, it's a really fun game. You're mixing in more cards, more colors. If you can get those colors on your you know cover of your magazine, Magazine. They're worth even extra victory points in the game. I think there's green, then it goes to white, then black, or maybe black, then white. And I mean, it's hard to get one of those newer cards into the, uh, as you're looking through, you know, looking through all your models to get one of those to win. But if you do, ooh, worth a lot of victory points. What a fun game. It's an absolutely blast to play. Um, this is another one. I, I, I do see it dropping in price now. It stayed at a very high price point. Like, I wouldn't pay more than 20 bucks for it. But for the uniqueness of the theme and that we had a bunch of guys, you know, playing a fashion model game, you know, a, a supermodel game, and we were all enjoying it, that should tell you something right there. Cover me, awesome game. Moving on to number 217 is Truck Off. Truck Off is a game I picked up uh, with some gift cards from Target. I didn't know what to get. I had some gift cards, didn't know what to use them on. Looked at the board game section, went, well, here's a game about food trucks. That may be interesting. What a great game. <laughs> You're rolling these different sided die, whatever they pop up on, that's how many hungry customers are at those venues. Of course, some of the smaller venues don't have as many customers, but it would be good. It would behoove you to put a food truck there because if you're the exclusive one, you're not, you're not, uh, you know, sharing that vending with anyone. You have to split the customers depending on how many vending trucks there are. Now, at the beginning of the game, everyone gets the same deck of cards, and I think they have to move like a certain amount. I think it's like two or something from their deck. And this really, this is where the strategy comes into place because all these cards help you cheat and do rule breaks in the game, but they're worth victory points at the end. If you can hold on to them, they're worth a lot of victory points. You say, oh man, I'm not going to play any of these up here because they're worth a lot of victory points. I'm going to keep them. Nope, you end up playing them, and people will play through their hand a lot. And just You'll see victory points just flying out the window. Go ahead, because you get greedy for the bigger areas, or you have you have different abilities. You can move your truck or move other trucks. And so and it depends, because no one knows what everyone's deck is, because the two cards they randomly discarded, or they discarded, no one gets to see them. So in essence, everyone, someone may not have the same cards. There's a lot of take that cards. There's a lot of it'll help me cards. Which cards are you going to keep more of? I mean, it doesn't. you don't know. Uh, really nice game. It's got some hilarious uh, 
uh, food truck names as well. I think it may be still available at Target. I don't know. Either way, this game cannot cost more than 15 bucks. It's a small box game, but I have the best time playing uh, uh, Truck Off. It's so much fun. Well worth your time. At number 216 is Cheng Ching. Uh, you are building the Great Wall of China. You have these uh, uh, building pieces that look really nice, and you're taking turns uh, playing in different areas, trying to score the most points. Get the get the uh, all these regions are divided up along the wall, and you're trying to get the most wall space in some of these regions to score these big victory points. Uh, there is something I think called the Emperor's Favor uh, tokens. Play with those every time. That's like a little mini expansion that comes with the game. Play with those every time. That's what makes the game really awesome but at the same time as you're scoring those points you're also going to be moving down the uh, score point ladder because if you have the majority on the other side of the board which is divided up differently than the regions on one side uh, then you could be losing negative points because the Mongolians are there I think or is the Mongolians or Mon I can't remember who it is but they are there and they are attacking you at the wall and so if you're the majority of the wall there you're going to suffer some negative points so you really need to balance the game and certain uh, cards you can play, certain special cards you have in your hand can help you mitigate or increase, uh, mitigate the damage or increase bonus points in certain areas. Really smart game. I see this game going for 10 bucks or less in auctions and on resales and stuff. It's a very simple, low, low game to get. I mean, it is, I would almost call this a beginner game too, a, a gateway game, just because it's so simple. It looks beautiful on the, on, on the table, absolutely fun to play. And to be honest, if you're looking for a cheap but really solid game, I think Chain Ching is it. Absolutely love this game. Number 215 is one of the Probably, probably the most beautiful game I have in my collection is Grim Forest. Grim Forest, you're playing the three little pigs or their mom, if you're playing with four players, and you're trying to build three houses. They can be out of straw, brick, or wood. Your choice. You can build one of each or three straw, whatever you want. Now, at the end of the game, even though straw is the easiest to build, they're worth the least amount of points. So someone with a you know, two halfway built brick houses are probably going to beat out three straw. So you got to think about that. The unique thing about this game is that every everyone is playing eventually with a friend. It's a secret, it's not a secret, it's a bonus that you'll be able to do that no one else will. Well, when you have to grab for a new bonus card, you have a decision to make. Do you switch it out with the one you have? or give it to another player and switch out the one they have. You're thinking, why would I give this great card to someone else? Because they may have a really good strategy going with the player with the uh, special ability they have. You're like, uh-uh, you need to lose that friend. So here, take this one instead. And I mean, those things just mix around all the time. It's really fun. Uh, the pieces for this, the minis, look incredible. It's probably the most overly produced game ever. It has minis for cards that don't come out in the game. I've never played a game where I've used more than, it's always less than half of the minis in there. Um, like I said, it's, it's sad. You have this beautiful dragon mini and ogre mini and, and big bad wolf mini, but you won't be playing them all because unless that card pops up in the game, you're not playing it. Uh, building the huts, you know, building the houses is a lot of fun. It looks really cool. Uh, and this is a game where you're trying to trying to go to certain areas to gather those resources, but the more people who you're, you're, you're taking out one of the three or four areas you visit, put it face down, everyone reveals at the same time. There are certain other cards you can play to kind of mitigate your luck there or move someone else or make, get different bonuses. Uh, during the game and uh, you're trying to go to areas where no one is going to go to so it's, it's a little bit uh, fake and double fake going on here everyone's trying to deceive the other person because if you're there you're going to have to split the bricks or the wh whatever the material is there really awesome game really a lot of fun pieces look uh, minis look great it, it, it is going to cost you a pretty penny I haven't seen this game drop very much but that's because of all the great minis and it has a great divider too honestly the as artwork goes, as mini goes and everything, this may be one of the nicest games I have in my collection. Absolutely love Grim Forest. It is a phenomenal game. Moving on to number 214. 214 is a game that I, it just recently came out again to my table. It's always coming out. Garbage Day. Uh, garbage Day is basically a card stacking game. You're stacking cards on this garbage can, trying to bounce them out and not have them tip over. Uh, certain cards can screw other players. 
or, or cards you just play in your room. Now, if your room gets above 10 points, you have to clean your room and you put all those cards around the edge of this uh, garbage pail without them falling over. It's one of those games that you just kind of bring out at the end of a board game night or at the beginning if you're waiting on someone. And like I said, I just brought it out recently and we played again. It's so much fun. I remember we played the entire deck through and I thought, wow, we went through the entire deck and that someone had lost the game after that. They have to draw a new card. But that's when I just, I bought all the expansions, which are really cheap now. I think they're a dollar each. Um, but you get those, adds more cards, adds more dynamics to the game. And and we'll never go through that deck now. There's, there's so many cards in there. But it is so much fun because the whole time everyone's, everyone's screaming, everyone's going nuts. Don't play with the fan on. Learn that rule <laughs> very early. But this is a game, I, I think I say this every year, when I, I won it at BGG Spring Con, I was like, well, this game looks like garbage. I was about to chunk it or give it to my nephews. But then we played, it was like, ooh, there's a game here. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I've seen, that tra I've seen some amazing card layouts where that trash can is bending over, but it hasn't fallen yet because those cards are, yeah, they're perfectly balanced in there. There are these two punched holes in all the cards because you have to see the bottom of the floor so you can't stack it on top of another card where there is you know no no risk of it falling over it always has to be on you're always playing on the edges love that about this game love that about this game garbage day fantastic game go out and get it at number 213 once again queen games enters my list and this one is maharani maharani is a tile placing game we're trying to land different tiles in an area uh, you're spinning a wheel in the center of the board and then playing whatever tile it is in that specific area now there are some coins that you have in your own little player board that you can flip over and break the uh, rules on where you can place a certain tile and, uh, and sometimes you may have to just skip your turn and flip over all your coins again. And when I read that rule, it's like, no one will do that. We do that every time. Uh, I do recommend, though, this is, this is kind of sad. Maharani on its own is good. Maharani with the queenies is fantastic. If you can get those halvesy queenies or the ones with the wild card, the yellow color, that is way better to play with. Makes the game a little bit more uh, bearable because you can place, you have more options on where to place tile and what to do with them. And you can score different points or more victory points, which is really fun. The game is so much fun, especially with the queenies. Queenies. But uh, it, I, I've seen it. It's kind of like Azul. Azul is a very popular game, and I see Maharani uh, with the same attributes. But for my money, I think Maharani looks to be a better game. Now, in full disclosure, I've never played Azul, but I have seen playthroughs of it, and it doesn't impress me. Maharani does. And this is a game that my gaming group loves, too. We love playing it. I think I only played the base game once, Plain Jane. I threw in those Queenies and have never looked back since. I think the Queenies are just wonderful. And that's a sad thing. I think you can still find this game secondhand uh, with the Queens, and that's the version you should get if you can. The base game along is, is, is fun, it's fun, but the Queens just make it that much better. So Maharani, my number 213. At number 212 is Rococo. Rococo, you are making dresses or suits for the rich nobles for a party that evening. Uh, basically, it's a deck builder because you're getting bigger and nicer cards to help out, to help you sew these dresses or collect resources to build these dresses to get those victory points. There's a little area control going on the board too because you're trying to get characters in different areas so that you can have majority and score victory points at the end. You can get extra money or victory points also by getting ornaments around the area too, which can net you some extra, uh, uh, a little bit of both. Like I said, coin, because the coin is tight in this game. Uh, they just recently came out with a deluxe edition that came out with the expansion included. That is the edition you should get. Buying the second hand is still astronomical prices, even after the reprint came out. I don't understand why that is. I do have the other mini expansion, the Christmas dresses too, um, but the game overall has grown on me. I know when I first did the review, I thought, wow, I got in a trade. I traded a bunch of little junk games for that big game with the expansion. We play, we put out the expansion, but like I said, no one ever goes there. It's really the jewelry box expansion is not really worth it. And so, but the deluxe edition has everything from Eagle Griffin Games, and it is well worth it. In fact, if you're watching this video live, I think they did a uh, Black Friday sale where they had 30% off of everything, and that's when you should have gotten it. Uh, but anyway, Rococo is just a phenomenal game. Absolutely love it. 
and uh, I, I, it's grown on me over the years. Over the years, I was, I was a ho hum. I said, "This is a this is a twenty dollar game." I still believe it's worth only twenty bucks. Um, just the base game should only be worth that. It sells for way more than that. It is a good game, um, but uh, I, I like it even more than I did when I first got it. So that's saying something there. Great game, Rococo. And finally, at number 212 is Pizarro and Company. Uh, this is also known as Magellan. It is basically a bidding game. You are bidding uh, on one of the explorers to put your ship on the board. Now, these tiles, uh, these boards are double-sided, so the powers for certain uh, navigators or whatever, these explorers, can be different and switch up the game a lot, which is really good because you can only, on the second round, you can only bid on those explorers which you bid the first round and you on the third round you can all there's only one of each explorer in the deck so there can only be one ship there and that's where you can get usually the biggest victory points too but you have to have ships previously you have to have one bids previously of that explorer really unique game it's kind of a I, I would call this a light auction game I love auction games though and I love that some of them give you unique powers too because the cards in your hand if you keep a few will be worth victory points as well instead of coin that you're bidding for so there is that neat balance there it's just fun there's there's nothing too heavy about the game I don't like the score track the score track is a little wonky I get what they were doing with it combining both boards one is the every 10 and one of them goes up to nine so every time you move up you have to move the ship up and then go up again and then move up to nine then when it hits 10 you go back down here and move the ship up again that's kind of finicky but other than that the game is really fun straightforward auction game that is a lot and it is pretty cheap too a lot of these games i'm telling you about folks except for rococo are really cheap so hey if this is the game for you simple auction game go up and pick it out all right folks that is it for now but hey i'm gonna round out the rest of my outside the top 200 games next time see you later